My name is Anne Marie. I am a lead carnivore keeper here at the Topeka Zoo. Today we have our African lions. Um, closest to us here is Zuri. We have her sister from the same litter, Asante. Both of these ladies are 16 years old. They turned 16 on the 6th of April, so this month. And then in the back over there, soaking up his son in his little uh, square trap, that is Avis. He is currently 15 years old, but he will be turning 16 just like the ladies uh, October 14th, so that's coming up a little later this year. Um, let me tell you a little bit about their uh, counterparts in the wild. Uh, African lions, they're obviously from Africa. They'll live in open uh, uh, grasslands, um, some uh, brush, they'll live in some uh, brush as well. Um, this all allows them different types of safety. Um, so they'll live in large groups called prides. Roughly anywhere from three lions to 30 lions will be in a group at a time. Um, and they do this for several reasons. So the females are the ones that are typically doing the hunting. Um, they will go out in uh, groups together. And usually the lighter, more agile females will be the ones that are chasing down the animal uh, that they are intending to capture and they will herd them towards the larger lionesses who will then try and sneak up on them and take down the prey. So they will actually then share this meal together. They'll bring some home uh, to the cubs and to the males. Uh, the males are hunting less than 10% of the time. So their job in their social group is more to take care of the territory that they have. Uh, they will make sure that no one's gonna come and encroach on their area that they've claimed as their own. And while the lion, female lions are out hunting, they will actually stay behind and take care of the cubs and make sure that they are safe. So when these guys form their groups, it's usually of a bunch of related females. Uh, you'll have your mothers, your cousins, your baby cubs. Um, and those guys are all related. The few males that are in the group are unrelated to any of the females and they kind of work their way into the group and then they stay and protect it. Uh, they do not very much likely um, welcome in any other into their pride. If a male wants to join their group, they're gonna have to fight the other male lions and at that point, they either get defeated and leave or they take over and the other males will head out on their own. So the only times that the lions are usually in smaller groups is when we're talking about the nomads. So at roughly two years of age, the group, especially the mothers, will kick out their male cubs. That is um, when they are completely weaned, ready to go off on their own, and the moms will actually drive off the males. Sometimes the males will be strong enough that they will then try and take over their own pride. But usually they, you know, they're gonna fight, be fighting a more experienced male. And so a lot of the time they'll travel as a nomadic male bachelor group. Um, it is very rare, but sometimes the moms will actually also kick out a female cub. Um, again, that would happen around two years of age. Not entirely sure why this happens, but they will sometimes um, wander off on their own trying to find another group, or they might actually join a nomadic male group and start a new family group altogether there and start their own pride. Um, so right here, Asante, she's playing a little bit with the ball uh, enrichment that we gave her. Um, Asante, if I were to talk about how she fits into this little pride, she's kind of the one that keeps the peace. Um, she is the less dominant of the two females. Um, and she just kind of goes, goes with the flow. Every once in a while, she'll assert herself. But for the most part, Zuri's the dominant female and she kind of 
is the first to do stuff, the first to want to get her food. Um, and she has no problem challenging either of the other two to try and take something. Um, Avis in the group, he's definitely the most chill and relaxed of all three of them. Um, at this point, he kind of wants to keep the peace with everyone also. I'd say he's like another peacekeeper in the group. You know, if he wants something, he will defend it, but he's more likely to let the ladies get it first and then um, he'll take whatever he gets after that. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? I don't know if there's um, if people are typing questions that I might be able to answer. Um, have the females had cubs? Um, not during my time here. I believe that Asante has had um, one litter, um, but that I'm not. Yeah, and it was just one you cub. Yep. Okay, um, that was before my time, but she did have one cub, and I believe at this time and age they will not be having any uh, cubs in their future. Any other questions? I can talk a little bit about cubs. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, so when the, the females, when they have cubs, they'll actually um, go to a more secluded area of their territory and they'll have their litter and they'll stay separate from the group, usually for up to three weeks. Um, that's usually the time where the moms will start taking their cubs around. Um, and at six weeks, that's typically when they're more like weaned from mom and they can go do a little bit more on their own. Um, but it's really cool because all of the adult females will actually be able to help feed um, anyone other's cubs. So they'll actually feed cubs that aren't from their own specific litter. Um, and it's usually because they're having litters at roughly around the same time. And they can have them um, maybe like every other year is usually when they'll be having um, more cubs. Fascinating. So would you be able to talk a little bit about um, what we feed our lions here and how much they get and things like that? Absolutely. Um, so these guys, we feed them a ground meat. Um, it's Nebraska. And since we do have um, our, an older group of lions at this point. We've taken care of them for a good chunk of their lives um, and now we are feeding them senior meat um, and that just helps with the longevity of how long they can live and I'll get into that a little bit here. So under human care in zoos, um, they, they get the best nutrition, they get the best veterinary care. So their lives are extended longer than they would live out in the wild. So they actually probably would not uh, be alive any longer if they were out in the wild. But here, um, since they do last longer, their kidneys actually usually don't handle the meat as well after a certain point. And that's you know not straight across the board, but it is typical that cats will have kidney diseases and that's true for your domestic cats at home. So the senior meat just kind of helps them um, prevent. We use it as both a preventative and if they already are having any kinds of problems. And that just helps um, their body with those types of issues. So as far as we know, none of our um, cats have any kidney issues. We do blood work with them and none of the results coming back have indicated that they have that. But we do feed them that to make sure that we're just still keeping them as healthy as possible. Um, they also get, once a week, they'll get bones, which is very exciting. Uh, Sunday is bone day, and it's our favorite day of the week. And we also, one day a week, give them a fast day where we feed them, actually, we still give them a little bit of meat um, for training purposes. But in the wild, you know, they're not actually going to be eating every single day. Um, and so it kind of gives them that same lifestyle. We want to give them the same type of um, habits as they would reflecting what it would be like in the wild. And so the fast day is kind of like that for them. Um, you know, in the wild when they're hunting, they have short bursts of energy. Um, and for the most part, they'll be lounging the rest of the day, building up that en energy, just kind of hanging around, maybe grooming each other. Um, but for roughly 21 hours during the day, they won't be very active. Um, and then when they're hunting, they'll have those short bursts of energy and then uh, they'll kind of eat and rest some more.
So would you say that bones are their favorite food? We have a few people asking. Uh, you know, it's tough. I would say actually Avis's favorite food is something that will provide him for enrichment from time to time, which is actually meat flavored baby food. Um, Bone Day, I think, is uh, something that's real excited for them because, again, that's something that, you know, when they're eating animals out in the wild, they'll be gnawing on the bones and whatnot. So, um, for them, that's great because that's just a natural thing that uh, they would be doing anyway. And, of course, for us keepers, we love watching them um, get excited, looking for their bone in the habitat, and then when they finally have it, they take it to their own little safe spot to keep uh, eating on it. Eli wants to know, how fast can a lion run? Um, they can actually, that's a great question. So they can run the length of um, a football field, I want to say in 20 seconds, uh, which is really fast. I know I cannot run that fast. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I certainly can't either. Um, Maggie would like to know if they lose their teeth as they get older. Um, they definitely can. Um, you know, obviously, it's like people, we go through sets of teeth. Um, so when they're, you know, young, they will have some teeth that they lose and then they'll grow in their adult teeth. Um, in terms of old age, yeah, absolutely. Um, just like humans, they also can lose their teeth. Um, here at zoos, typically, if we see that um, they are having a tooth issue, we'll actually bring in a dental expert um, and we'll see if we can either do something to save the tooth or if it makes more sense for their health to remove the tooth, we will have the dentist remove the tooth. So it's pretty cool that they get that here at the zoo. Nice. And how long did they live in the wild? Um, usually around 10, 10 years, maybe 12. Um, but some don't even live that long. And, you know, for whatever reason, it could be that um, someone came and, um, you know, human beings are obviously a huge issue, which is very unfortunate. But in the wild, maybe if they got in a fight with um, a group of hyenas that just ended up taking over or a pack of African wild dogs. Now it is more likely that the lions are gonna be the ones winning these fights, but you know, you just never know. Um, also, if a new male comes into a group and they end up taking over the group, they will actually kill any of the cubs that are not belonging to them so that they can start their own family with these group of ladies and get their own genetics out there. Um, oh, what are all their names? So um, our male, that his, his name is Avis, A-V-U-S. Then we have Asante, one of our females, A-S-A-N-T-E. And our other female is Zuri, Z-U-R-I. And I know Asante means thank you in Swahili. Yeah. And I think Zuri means beautiful, doesn't it? Or misery means beautiful. Um, I'm not I'm entirely sure about the meaning yeah. of Zuri, but Asante, yes, I know you are correct on that. So what is their favorite enrichment toy, somebody asked. Um, woo, it depends on the day, and that is a great question. Um, for the ladies, a lot of the time I'll see them playing with a ball or with a barrel. Um, you saw both of them a little bit playing with it. Uh, today we are filming out in their sandbox, um, and that is because it's a little cooler out, so we want to give them some access to the sun and outside, but then they also have access to the indoor building. Um, they'll be a little more playful with the ball when they're actually out in the full yard. Um, Avis, on the other hand, he loves scents. Um, scent is a huge type of communication with lions. Um, they might, the males might urinate to leave a mark, to mark their territory. Um, they'll also use their muzzle and their uh, feet that have scent glands on them to leave um, scents that communicate to the other lions in their group and other lions to say, hey, this is our territory. Um, so with him, man, he loves rolling around in taco seasoning, and <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Do they sit in cardboard boxes like your cats at home? Um, you know, if you see, we actually have Avis here. We caught him in a little square. So they do love boxes. Yeah. 
Um, the lions only get boxes every once in a while. Um, we do have to be careful with the enrichment we give them. Uh, sometimes they're a little naughty and they try to eat the cardboard and we just don't want them to uh, get too much of it where it might cause an internal issue. So usually instead of doing a cardboard box, we'll make little squares for them around the yard. And as you see, yeah, like you're a cat at home, we've caught an Avis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can you talk a little bit about why male lions have the mane and female lions do not? Absolutely. So um, they'll usually be getting in that mane at about a year of age. Um, and it starts usually with a fluff around the head, a little bit around the neck. And as they age, the, um, it'll get larger. And the larger it is, the more impressive it, it is gonna be to the females. So the females will actually find that attractive. But it also is something that will say to the other male lions, like, hey, I am this big, tough male and you don't wanna mess with me. Um, and if they do end up getting in a fight, that fluff, that extra fluff around the neck will help protect them from bites and scratches. So it has a lot of purposes. Excellent, and they are really big. Can you, do you know how much they weigh by chance? Um, you know, off the top of my head, um, I want to say a couple hundred at least. Right? Yeah, you know, let me get that for you. Uh, we did just recently weigh them and since we weigh all of our animals here, I always have different numbers in my head for that. Um, just because there's just so many different weights for the different animals. Um, but I will tell you... So in the medical, yeah, in the medical field, um, even though Americans, we love to put things in pounds, um, in the medical field to keep it across the board so everyone can quickly look and understand, we do it in kilograms. Fascinating. Oh, we caught a Zuri also. Oh, and how do you tell Zuri and Asante apart? Um, a lot of it is based on personality, to be honest. You can just see their personality. Um, but Zuri is slightly bigger than Asante. Um, on her forehead, you can see they both have uh, two little marks on their head. And hers are a little bit scruffier than Asante's. Asante's are a little bit smoother. So that's just like a quick visual way to tell. Wonderful. Well, we are at our time. Does anybody at home have any final questions for Anne Marie on the lions or about social structures in general for animals? Okay. Well, we want to thank you so much, Anne Marie, for teaching us about lions. And thank you for those of you.